bastards here can't look at you and driving. Car Chronicles. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions from, from those of you that are in the 50 and up club. I, I did a video speaking to that. And a lot of my clients right now are over 50. Um, all women. Uh, a couple men. And I'll be honest with you, my last video, I was kind of, you know, lighthearted when I was talking about it. Uh, offended a lot of people because it's, it's a lot of women that just really don't want to hear the truth. And, and that's honestly the issue today is, you know, y'all ask a question. And when an honest man... When I say an honest man, I mean that a man that you're not paying for this video. I'm not asking you to pay me for this video. You're not paying for my time. This not a coaching session. Um, we're not dating. I'm not trying to date you. I have no reason to lie to you. I have no reason to lie to you. It, it ain't like I get a bonus for lying. And I'm just here to tell you. When you over 50 and you, like my client that's over 50, a lot of them own businesses. They own their house. The women, they own their house. They own a business. That is a, that's a dangerous space to be dating in. You gotta be very, you gotta be very careful because men, I just saw the other day. Uh, I think my wife showed me I just saw the other day of a man. This was a, 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 a man who he had a girlfriend or like a mother of his children, the mother of his children. They were something. And now this man, I guess them broke up with her and now he with a man. But the man is, this is a black man. The man he with is a white man who dressed like a woman and looked like a woman from YouTube. So I don't know what that terminology is. I don't know if it's a, you know, transgender or if it's a cisgender. I don't know what exactly the individual identifies as. But when I look at that man, being a black man, I know that that's a man, I could look at him and tell that's a man that done gone through some things. He probably was touched when he was little. He done gone through some things. He done seen some things. Like, he done seen people's life get taken. He done seen drugs, addiction. He done seen all kind of stuff. And him, his whole thing is survival. He in there with the man cooking. You know, he got that man sitting all on his lap, straddling him. And I'll be honest with you, I done seen this before myself. I done seen guys, I done seen guys who will just walk up to a guy and just knock him out. Just, ugh. Just no questions asked, no nothing. Just, if he got something against this guy or this guy done did something, just walk up and just knock him out. I mean, just cold hearted, just vicious, just goons like other men trembling in fear of these men and these same type of men I done seen this with my own eyes go and be with a gay man for money now yes technically that mean that he like men too that he got that in his spirit but really what it be it be for money because they get the person car they get to live on the person's house. They get to, you know, buy all the Jordans they want, all the Gucci and gold they want. And a lot of men, I'm telling you, it's two things that run neck and neck with men. That's money and sex. It's two things. Those are two things that a man will do almost anything for. And so what I'm trying to tell you is when you cross 50, and you are established, meaning you got a house, you got a car. 
if you got a 401k, if you got a retirement account, if you got a savings, if I mean it could be 10,000 or more. But if you got assets, you become a target. If you want a man that's younger than you, you become a target. It's men that your is your same age that just don't have it together. And a lot of women, you know, say, um, uh, well, it's a lot of men in their fifties and sixties who still playing games, still cheating. A lot of men over fifty don't take care of themselves. They don't take care of themselves and they stink and they, you know, got E D. And I want somebody that's young and vibrant because I'm young and I'm vibrant and I look good. And everybody tell me I look 35. Everybody tell me I look 40 and I don't look my age. I know I don't look my age. Listen, I know you don't look your age. You might not look your age, but you still your age that you still your age. It don't matter how you look. Yeah, you could be pretty. Yeah, you can look good, but you still got to be careful. You still got to be careful. You got to make sure that, and this is the thing, that a lot of that a lot of women who ask me these questions about dating over 50 don't want to say out of their mouth. You just got to come to the point to say, look, I just want me some dang a lane. I just want me a dang -a -lane. I don't care if he's sorry. I don't care if he ain't got no job. I just want somebody to go and break my back. And because that's essentially what I be hearing. Like, I want a younger man. I want a young, what you want a younger man for? He don't make more money. He not more mature. He not more established. He not more stable. If a man in his 50s and 60s shot out and he out his mind, that just mean that young man gonna go to that same place. That mean when he get 50, he gonna be shot out. And so listen, and I'm not here to stroke your ego. Y'all ask me a question. I'm the wrong one. If you want to, if you want somebody to lie to you, there's a lot of people out here not a lie to you. But I'm the wrong one. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You got to be careful. You got to be careful because these men out here playing games. It's a lot of men that's playing games. Now you got good men out here, but you got to know what a good man look like. You got to know what a good man look like. You got to see this. And what I mean by good man. He gonna come to you and he gonna have what he need. He's gonna be established. Meaning, he's gonna have a car in his name. Not his mama name, not his baby mama name, not his ex-girlfriend name, in his name. You ought to be able to look up that tag number and it's in his name. You ought to be able to go in that glove compartment, look at that registration and it's in his name. He gonna have a car in his name He's going to have a place to stay in his name. He's going to have a job. He's gainfully employed. He's going to have a job. And he's going to have ambition. I mean, he work hard. You see him going to work every day. He off on his couple days a week, but he go to work. And he's going to have integrity, character, meaning he know the Lord. He love the Lord. He got a prayer life. He, he walking right. You might not see him pray, pray. You might not hear him pray. He might not pray with you, but he resembles the attributes and characteristics of God. And you feel that. And you don't just see that for a week, for a month. It's three months. It's six months. And I know a lot of women over fence say, I don't want to be married again. Listen. This is a page of marriage because if you sleeping with somebody and you're not married, that means you're in fornication. If you don't believe in fornication, I'm the wrong person to be listening to because I teach on biblical principles. I'm not condoning sleeping with somebody that you're not married to. I'm not condoning that. That's dangerous, it's ignorant, it's illicit, it's ill-advised because it ain't foolproof when you marry. So how much worse to be not married? At least when you married, the person done had to say vows before you and before God and sign the dotted line before the state 
at least it's like you see them jump through some kind of hoops. When you're not married, you just giving your body away. And they could just walk away, no consequences, no alimony, no spousal support, no child support. If y'all, you know, if you happen to have some amazing or uh, froze your eggs or something, y'all have a child old, and you know, over 50, uh, no child support, no nothing. No, no divorce attorney. Just take your cookies off. Take every cook out the jar. Just gone. Just gone. Gone by this business. Doing this thing. And and this is the thing. I'm gonna tell you. This is what you got to watch out for. You treat everybody fair. Every man you meet, you treat them fair. You talk to them fair. Don't look at them sideways. Don't look at them with a side eye. Don't accuse them of nothing. You supposed to be pure. You're supposed to be healed. You're supposed to be healthy. So you look at him the same. And you let him show you who he is. You don't go in broken and bitter and angry. Like, like it's a lot of people out here, men and women, that's teaching messages that got you angry, that got you scared, that got anxiety, instead of having confidence, knowing who you are because you got the, you got the tips and the tools to succeed. So you go in, you cool, calm, and collected, and you paying attention. You paying attention, and you see this man, and you see him, and you see that he's honest. He, he said, hey, I'm gonna call you at nine. He called you at nine. Hey, let's go on a date. Y'all go on a date. He got his place, he got his car. He's not, he's not coming and saying, Man, you know, we just wasting money. Like, I might as well move in with you. He ain't saying that. He courting you. Y'all dating. Y'all getting to know each other. And six months, eight months, nine months, then he talking about marriage. He talking about marriage. Around that six-month mark, he talking about marriage, especially if he over 50. Because at this age, he know what he want. He should know what he want. It shouldn't have to be dating two, three years. You already know what you want. He should be an open book. He talking about his 401k. He talking about his retirement plan. He talking about his investments that he thinking about, working on, or that he has. He in position. If in the six months, this man go to talking about he got a business idea. And he wants y'all to be partners. And what you thinking about on business and what you doing on business and do you want to invest in this business? Run. Run. He talking about moving in with you? Run. His car broke down. He see you got two cars, one on paid for, that you, you just happen to keep. Can I hold your other car? My car broke down. Run. Run. He ain't, he ain't where he need to be. You will come up. You will come up. And that's what y'all got to realize. Like, listen, this come up season. These men trying to come up. A lot of these guys is trying to come up. And you cannot get them confused with the good men that's out there. And guess what? The men that's trying to come up, oh, my goodness. They're going to be charming, sweet, get you in that sin. And when he gets in that sin, oh, he doing it all. He doing it all. You hear me? He got you just, whoo. You in there. <laughs> At the Maxwell loan, you just, he doing it all. And you, you blown away. Your back hurting because of him. Your knees wobbling. Your head gone. You fantasizing, thinking about them all day. Now you cooking. Now you cooking your specialty, your peach cobbler. You ain't cooked peach cobbler or your banana pudding in a long time. Now you done brought that out. Now you now you got that out. You done cook your dirty rice. You know you're supposed to save your dirty rice for New Year's and your black eyed peas. Now you cooking your dirty rice. Everything, because he got you gone. And see, that's the thing. Let me tell y'all something now. Let me, let me help y'all understand something. See, men are men. I'm going to tell you like this. I was talking to my granddaddy who was 88 years old when I was 20. And he said, son, I can't even tell you nothing. 
He said, so I can't even tell you nothing because listening to you talk, you already got it together. You already know what you're talking about. Me, that's when I learned men, men. So so some some women, a lot now, women who they understand that even Jesus Christ was only on earth 33 years. Age is age don't determine wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Wisdom don't come from age. It's a lot of people who are up in age and still ignorant, still foolish, still making bad decisions. It's I'm in a way better place than 99% of men 50 and up in my financial life, in my spiritual life. So age don't 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 get that twisted and think that oh just because I'm younger that I don't understand men of your age group. They out here and I understand them and I talk to them and I see them and I know them and they in my family and they all around and I'm coaching women. Every day I'm coaching a woman who is who either she is over 50 or the man she dealing with over 50. And so I'm getting the data from across the board, from all over the country, from all different races, all different races, Indian, white, Asian, uh, black, all of them, nationalities, and Canadian, Jamaican, African, American, you hear what I'm telling you? Puerto Rican, Dominican, I got clients across the board, so I get the data. See, what you, and that's why I try to tell you that I'm pulling data, major data, and your data is coming from your life and your friend circle. So when I bring you something, this I'm bringing you like a scientific study. And what I'm trying to tell you is that that younger man that you lusting after, he is not, he don't want you for the right reasons. He don't want you for the right reason. If he more than five years younger than you, you about to play yourself. You about to play yourself. The man who genuinely fall for a woman older than him. And look at this now. Look at this now. You see older men trying to get younger women. What make you think that the younger man that you lusting after, that you playing around with, and when you really think about it, it's lust. It ain't just because he's such an amazing person. It's lust. The other thing is, what does he bring to the table? Ask yourself that now. What does he bring to the table? Ask yourself that. What does he bring to the table? It Does he have a good job? Can he take care of you? Does he have a business? Does he have a nice car, reliable car, good place to stay, financial plan? Now, you may have, if you are an exception to the rule, understand that. Don't, don't take an exception to the rule and try to make it the rule and, and try to make an argument that says, oh, it's some younger men that really love older women. Yeah, one out of a thousand. That's not, even if you got five, 50 out of a thousand, that still ain't enough. If you got a hundred out of a thousand, that still ain't enough. That's 10%. Now, if you had 50% of younger men want a woman, meaning that's, 50 or older for a genuine reason. I'm telling you, I'm a man. I'm out here. I'm out here. I, I've never met a man, never once met a man 35, 37, 40, and, and heard him say, man, I just really want me a woman that's um, 50 or older just because, like, they so sexy so amazing, so beautiful. They, they're not saying that. So what I'm saying is you got to get somebody that's on your level in life, that's in your generation because they done seen what you done seen. 
They didn't experience what you didn't experience. And it's like, okay, if you meet a man, he's around your age, he five years younger than you, five years older than you, 10 years older than you, and he stank, he don't wash himself properly, he don't brush his teeth properly, keep it moving. Just keep it moving, that's him. That's him. That's not every man that you meet. And if you happen to meet a younger man that you really like, listen to me. And get out your feelings. Get out your feelings. Y'all act like, oh, he trying, you trying to shoot my dreams down, Tony. You trying to hurt me. You trying to make me feel like I'm old. I ain't trying to do none of that. I'm just trying to tell you what the game is so that you prepare because it's so many women who done lived all their life, done made it through, cross 50, start dealing with a man that's 35, 40, and he take her for everything. He get on, her, he marry her, get access to her 401k, start siphoning money out, get her to take out of her 401k, invest in his construction business, invest in his landscaping business. She wired 50,000 to his business account. He takes the money at 35, 40 years old and go and buy a car for his girlfriend that's 35, 40 or that's 25. And now this woman done lost her $50,000. You know how many times this happened? Because you have to also understand the nature of attraction. And as a man, I will tell you, I will tell you as a man, if men naturally are attracted to older women, yes, at a young age, the ninth grader wants the 12th grader, but that's a three year age gap. Yes, the 21 year old wants the 25 year old, but that's a four year old, that's a four year age gap. The 35-year-old is not checking for the 50-year-old. The 45-year-old is not checking for the 60-year-old. The 50-year-old is not checking for the 70-year-old. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. You got to understand attraction and the nature of attraction. Now, if you waiting for an exception to the rule, God bless you. That's between you and God. Don't don't put that in the comments so you got other every other woman waiting on a man to love them that's 10, 15 years younger than them. That's not wise because that's not common. And yes, you may read about it in a book. Somebody keep bringing up something about a prime minister or some guy who French or something and his wife 25 years older than him or 25 years younger than him. That's the only story you know. That's the only story you know, and you don't know why that is. Just because somebody wrote something do not mean they're telling the truth. Just because somebody telling their love story do not mean the motives are pure. Just you can't believe everything you read. I'm here to tell you. I'm out here in these trenches. You hear me? So I'm trying to tell you. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Anything is possible. But see, God ain't going to just do something that don't make sense just because your lustful desires. Just because you want somebody to break your back, that ain't that ain't what God operating in. God, God ain't trying to feel your lustful fantasies because you horny. So he gonna send you a husband that's young mandingo. That ain't that ain't what God operating in. Because that's confusion. That's confusion. That, that man, yeah, he young and loose and ready, but it's going to be for more women than just you. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. Today, you know what I'm seeing right now? You know what I'm seeing right now? When I look around me just closely, when I look around closely to me, I my, my daddy, my barber, my security guard, each one of them wife is five to five to twelve years younger. Why? Because 
they happen to be in an age range that they met this woman who younger than them and the woman being younger typically I coached somebody yesterday who her man is 20 years older than her that's typically the way that it goes not the other way around it's typically the woman is younger so if you 50 there are men that's 55 and built and muscular and so it's like it's two different arguments the women who bent on a younger man and want a younger man to feel young and vibrant all of those women say oh men in their 50s and 60s are lazy and sloppy and stinky and don't take care of themselves then the other argument is the women who feel young and they realize 50 is the new 40 60 is the new 50 and they feel young to speak up for their age group they'll say oh it's a lot of men i remember a lady wrote me and she was like tony why do you act like men who are over 60 or 70 are like decrepit and can't do anything she was like you know my grandfather is 84 and he's in europe right now on a tour living the best of his life sleeping with women and just having a blast and i was like okay congratulations that's that's him that's him that's not common that ain't common either now 84 or 74 it was one of them it was 74 84 i'm like that ain't common either now but it's men that's 55 60 65 still young and vibrant so it's like you just have to expand your dating pool but you better off dating up in age than down in age and if you happen to meet someone who is down in age you just have to go through the checks and balances you can't just you can't listen to your lust can't listen to your lust you got to go through the checks and balances you got to look at it and say okay does he have a house does he have a car does he have a job you know is he stable does he have a drinking problem does he have a smoking problem you got to go through and make sure that he is mature and that he is stable and that y'all's relationship is going to be authentic and organic and he doesn't need you for anything other than love because there are men there are men who like older women that is a thing there are men they're just not that common and when i say older i mean 10 years when i say older i mean 10 years or more there are men but on average what we seeing on average and this is what i teach the rule i don't teach exception to the rule because the exception to the rule will get you hurt trying to be the exception to the rule will get you hurt nine times out of ten so i teach the rules what we see on average is a 37 year old man with a 50 year old woman and he living off of her what we see on average is a slim guy with a woman who may be two twice his size and he's living off of her and it's not and he don't bring to the table what she bring to the table and she and he takes and he chooses her because he he's assuming that she has low self-esteem and she might be totally fine having her figure she might love herself but he assumes that she has low self-esteem he assumes that he, he doesn't assume he knows that a lot of men are judging women physically so he says this is a come up because she needs love she wants love but these other men they judging her because of that and some men a lot of men will go in there and not be attracted to a woman because of her age or because of her physique but they using her for her money for her stability for her position in life and that's what you got to pay attention to so i know i know the arguing spirits 
Oh, so you saying a woman just with a little extra meat on her bones can't be loved authentically. No, that is not what I said. I said you have to be careful and pay attention that the man who loving you is not trying to play on any insecurity, any societal norms, because he look, we are programmed by society. So a lot of times the movies and the magazines tell us who to like. This is the complexion, this is the height, this is the income level, this is the weight, this is the body type that you should like. So a lot of times people are choosing what they think looks good. It's like, why, why do you think, why do you think Idris Elba looks good, but not Flavor Flav? Who come up with that? Who come up with that? Who, how, who define that construct that Morris Chestnut and Common and Idris Elba are attractive to you, but Lil Wayne, Flavor Flav, Sam Cassell are not attractive to you? Who come up with that construct? You see what I mean? So we so programmed, so a lot of times we, we act based on how the world treats us. We treat ourselves a lot of times based on how the world treats us. So if the world hasn't been praising you, hasn't been, you know, supporting you, if the world hasn't been highlighting your beauty, your look, a lot of times people who don't fit inside of the construct, like me, I'm 5'10". So the world, so it make me look down on myself because the six foot and above get all the praise. You see what I mean? So that that call that caused insecurity in me. It made me not want to be with a woman that's five eight. I wanted to be with a woman that's like five four, five five, so I could feel like a man. Then I met my wife and she like five eight. So I had to grow. And I had to realize like most women want a man that's over six foot tall. So the fact that my wife is five eight and she's into me, I know it got to be for love because I didn't have any money. I was 21 years old. I ain't had no job. I, my, my major was not a money making major. It's not like I was in school to be a doctor or a lawyer. I was in school just bouncing around. So she didn't choose me for earning potential. She didn't choose me for aesthetics, for height, or none of that. So I had to realize that. Uh, UPS here, I hope she realized that. So I want you to understand that though. I ain't know I'd be talking this long. Now. I just was driving home. And um, so listen, I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not I'm not trying to make you feel old. I don't think that's old. I don't think 50 old. I don't think 60 old. I don't think 70 old. I know a man, 78, traveling the world. I don't think it's old. So don't get that. What I'm saying is I want you to be careful. I want you to make sure that it's a lot of games out here. It's a lot of men that's playing games out here that won't trying to get older women for the wrong reason. But look at the same thing though. Now on the flip side of this, it's a lot of women doing the same thing to men. It's a lot of women doing the same thing to men. I, um, my wife was showing me this lady who she probably in her late twenties or late or, or early 30s and with a man that's like 65 so and the man he all outside of now they of another race the man he he all outside of every societal construct of handsomeness he he far from it and here go this woman she inside of the constructs of beauty and and they together. But guess what? The man is a billionaire. So today what you see is a lot of, uh, what they call them, sugar daddies. So it's happening the other way around. And that's what you got to understand. You got sugar daddies and you got sugar mamas. And so when I'm trying to tell you, when you out here and you dating over the age of 50, 
and you're going to be dealing with somebody that's 10 years younger or more, you got to be sure that it's an organic connection and y'all just hit it off and it's meant to be and it's not because you established and stable and they need help. Thank you very much. Wait, sir, I got three more. Three more, okay. Be right back. You got three more, he said. Okay. So that's what you got to understand. But you ain't call me this one. You call me? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. And and so don't don't feel like I'm trying to shoot down your dream. Because see what I'm here for. I'm here to give you the real truth from, from the trenches. I be here streets. I be here streets. Real deal, holy field. And so understand that. I ain't, I ain't here to lie to you. I ain't here to just make you feel good. See, a lot of people gonna pander and say, hey, you know, you could be 65. And it is so many 35, 40 year olds that are just dying to be with you. No, you know why? It ain't even about looks. You could look young. You could look gorgeous. You could be beautiful. It ain't even about looks. It's also about compatibility. Y'all grew up different music, different technology, different mindset, different morals and values, different societal norms. It's like you, your conversation, you could barely relate to each other when you when you cross that 10 year age difference. It's hard to relate because you different generations. So that's what my point is when I did the video on dating 50 and up. And that's why I'm doing another one is be careful. Don't just be out here thinking with what's between your legs. Don't just be out here thinking about what you lusting after. And, and that's the same thing that a lot of these men doing. But see, this is the thing. In your age group, you gotta, it's real men. There are real men. Yes, you're gonna meet grown boys. Yes, you're gonna meet men who they want a younger woman to get their groove back, but that's a grown boy. Now, if they just happen to meet somebody who younger than them and they hit it off, I know men, like I mentioned earlier, who just met, it was an organic meeting and the woman happened to be younger. But there are men who they specifically looking for a younger woman. They, they 60 years old and they want a 40 year old woman. They 55 years old and they want, you know, a 35 year old woman. But guess what? A lot of those men, they got the money and they know that they got the, they about to buy that woman. They want to buy that woman. Gifts, cars, clothes, shopping trips, vacations to the islands. And the woman, she could actually be genuine and say, hey, love can happen in any way. And really the man's not being genuine. He want her because she, you know, PYT, pretty young thing. And he in a midlife crisis and he trying to get his groove back like Stella. And so he wants her for the wrong reason. There are men like that. But guess what? If you 50, 52, 53, 55, 60, and it's a man that's three, five years older than you, ain't nothing wrong with being with that man. Nothing wrong with being with that man who is mature, he healthy, he vibrant. And on your same level, if you go, if you meet three men in your age group and they just, they stink, they lazy, they, they still immature, okay, keep going. Keep going. How many women you know that just met one man and hit it off and, and, and they married to the sunset? No, in dating, we go through a lot of relationships. I had dealt with over 100 women before I met my wife. I had dealt with over 100 women before I met my wife. And so in none of them was my wife. So you can't get exhausted because you done met two, three men who in your age group and they bring something to the table, but they immature or, you know, don't take care of their body, but they got a good job, got a house, got a car, got some investment, but just don't like to have fun. Don't like to live. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, this Tony Gaston. God bless you. I got to get going here. We'll talk soon.